We're here today to talk and think about how technology is changing humanity and how humanity is changing technology. And when I think on the changes of technology in life, my main thoughts go directly to science or medicine or even to the smartphones you're looking right now. Well, those are legitimate questions for people like me that have classes all day and that, and for you, that have a job from nine to five. But well, have you ever thought what is entertainment? How entertainment has changed because of technology? Well, and I'm not talking about the TV series or the movies that we watch on TV. I'm talking about sports. Sports have undoubtedly changed over the last years. Let's see. In the beginning, only men were allowed to compete, and only those from the social elite. Right now, everyone can compete. You just have to be part of the sport elite. You just have to be the fastest, the strongest, and the one that jumps higher. In the beginning, sports were much violent, and now they promote respect, fair play, and friendship. In the beginning, the rules were much simpler, and the results were recorded manually. Right now, the rules are complex and rigorous, and the results are more transparent, and they can also be controversial. Remember in the World Cup, video assistant referee. This is a perfect example on how technology is present in this life of sport. In the beginning, sports were just for the people who could watch it live at the venues. But right now, everyone can, look, can watch them on TV, on laptops, on smartphones. And in the beginning, sports were much physical than they're right now. Well, because if you think on racing or darts or shooting, they're all broadcasted in sports channels every day. But they're not the kind of sport that requires the most physical action, right? But well, it's the strategy behind it. It's the technique. It's the focus that excites fans from all over the world. Well, you may be wondering why today I'm here to talk about the e-Olympic dream and not just the Olympic dream. Well, last year, I was named Young Changemaker for the Youth Olympic Games, and since then I've been working closely with international and the Portuguese Olympic committees, allowing me to have an incredible adventure that has been going on. I have met Olympic champions, presidents of organizing committees for the Olympic Games. I met the man who created the opening ceremony of the Athens Games. And I also had the Olympic torch in my hand. Well, I've been attended conferences and forums where we have been debating how will the Games adapt to the digital era and to this modern society. And some months ago, I was having dinner with my, my colleague Young Changemakers in London. And surprisingly, one of the topics we discussed was esports. Yes, the video games your brothers and sisters, your sons, your daughters, your cousins play on the computers or on the consoles, and that in recent years took a huge proportion and become a booming industry. It is this disruptive impact, an overwhelming dimension, and the money involved in the video games that contradict completely our idea that video games are just that, the games that teenagers play in their room. Well, but if they are just that, video games, why are we calling them esports? Do they have something to do with sports? In what sense are they a sport? I do not see tears, pain, sacrifice in gamers. Well, but if you ask any gamer how long and how hard it is for them to improve a strategy or a move in the game, the answer you'll get is a lot of time. Sometimes they need days, weeks, even years to compete at the best level, as any athlete in any traditional sport. So this made me think, 
what is a sport? And you can find in dictionaries and encyclopedias several definitions for sport that all of them will say that a sport is an activity that involves a physical effort and that you'll do for your self-satisfaction or for entertainment. In none of them, I could find any reference to the fact that a sport is also something mental. Because if you practice sport, your body has to be perfectly aligned with your mind and your mind perfectly aligned with your body. In fact, a sport is always a combination of your mind and your body. It is not difficult to understand it even on the traditional sports. Think about weightlifting. The athlete seems just being raising the weight. It is a totally physical action. But well, what we fail to realize is that before that, he had to train a lot. He has to be really strong mentally to exceed the limits. Or think about football. The team can be really strong physically, but without concentration, strategy, reaction, and looking for the competitors, the team will not win. Or think about golf, where the moves are minimal and have to be really precise. The athlete needs to know a lot about the weather, wind, humidity, the soil. In fact, there are different proportions of mind and body in all sports, and both are essential. And if you look for esports, esports has all of this. It has all the ingredients as traditional sports have. It has the mental part, it has the strategy, it has the resilience and the self-discipline. Yes, of course, there's not so much physical action in esports comparing with traditional sports, but you'll always need it. Let me ask you something. Think on the first time you ever played a video game. What happened in the first 10 seconds? You may have died, fell off a climb, and why? Well, you are just not used with the distance, the moves, how to use the remote or the keyboard. And yes, for a gamer to compete at the best level, he needs to practice it. Practice many times until it is perfect. Your arms and fingers have to move really quickly, your eyes have to follow every strategy, and your mind has to be extremely concentrated. Of course, you don't need to do 100 push-ups or run 10 kilometers in less than an hour, as in the other sports. But you have to be really strict with yourself and plan your training. And if you play a video game as a team, here you add another component, the teamwork. But what makes esports so important that we are discussing right now their integration in the multi-sports events when not all sports are there? Well, it has to do with everything beyond the game. It has to do with the 20,000 arenas sold out for the leagues and the tournaments. It has to do with the market value of it, this industry. $700 million with an annual growth rate of 40%. It has to do with sports clubs investing in creating teams. Sports clubs like Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester City, or the, Rocket, or the Houston Rockets. There are clubs that we watch competing on other sports. And they, want, and they have their own esports team competing nationally or internationally on these tournaments. It has to do with governments issuing athlete visas for esports players, guaranteeing them the same rights as any traditional sport play, uh, athlete. It has to do with a global audience that in 2018 will reach. 380 million people in the world, more 15% than last year. And it's expected that in three years, this value almost doubles. And you're just considering the people, this global audience, the ones who are watching it live on their computers or online platforms or on TV. Because we should also con have to consider the number of video game players in the world almost 
two billion. 70% of them aged under 30, uh, 35 years old, making this a very large and important population that will attract sponsors, investors, and also the multi-sports industry. For you just to have an idea, in 2018, the Dota 2 tournament had a winning price of $25 million, with the winning team earning 11 million of it, which is not so far of the money your team can earn if they guarantee a spot at the UEFA Champions League final. Or just the fact that in, 27, in 2017, NBA finals were watched by 20.4 million people, while the League of Legends World Cup was watched by 33 million. This World Cup was held in China. As, as you may imagine, it is in Asia where this industry is massive. Well, in Asia Pacific, there are 900 million people playing video games, almost 25% of the people living in this region. This is the reason why the Olympic Council of Asia decided to integrate esports as a demonstration sport in 2018 edition of the Asian Games with 18 teams competing for a spot at the podium. It is expected that in the edition of the 2022 of Asian Games, this becomes an event in the official program. But esports are much more than money and audience and numbers. It is also has this inclusive and unifying power. People nowadays are connected 24-7, 365 days a year. This allows esports players to play as a team with people from all the corners in the world. People playing from New Delhi to Bogota or from Cape Town to Vienna. Well, also in esports, you can have mixed teams, both in age and in gender. And also, handicapped people can join. There's no difference, because with these mixed teams, you can still guarantee the same quality of competition and the same fairness, something that you do not have in other sports. It is this union and inclusion that are aligned with the Olympic values and the Olympic goal of bringing people from all over the world together in harmony and friendship. And this is where the Olympic Games can take advantage of the esports industry and characteristics. It will attract a really young and passionate and dynamic audience. It will attract investors who may be willing to put their money investing in programs of the development of sport. It has to do with also bringing really passion esports players to this competition, who really want to honor all their effort and their love for the video games. But well, for a game, for the sports to be at the Olympic Games, a lot of things have to happen. First, the International Olympic Committee has to accept esports as a sport. Then, it has to recognize one international federation to rule and administrate this sport, which is something that right now does not happen. There are a lot of federations, but only one can be recognized by the IOC. And of course, this sport has also to fulfill some requirements of the Olympic Charter. The Olympic values of excellence, friendship and respect have also have to be fulfilled. This means that the, ga the video games that promote violence, discrimination and hate have to be out. Well, but after that, we still have some questions to answer. Like, how will the athletes qualify for these games? Which venues should be used? How will doping and manipulation will be controlled? Will esports be part of the summer, winter, or youth Olympic Games? Or will we just have one single event, the e-Olympic Games? Well, right now, we don't know. And I do hope that some years from now, we all have these questions answered. And I hope by that time, we can finally see, and I do hope that gamers can finally leave 
their e-Olympic dream. Well, of course, the technology will continue to change, and to be honest, we don't know how far it will get. So what we will we discuss in 10, 20, and 30 years? Will it be the use of artificial intelligence in the sports competition? Will athletes, be, will athletes, referees, and coaches be replaced by robots? Well, we don't know. And to be honest, I cannot have this answer for you. The only thing that I know is technology will keep moving forward, and it will not stop. And as you and me, the only thing you know in life is that the only constant we have is change. And for the world of sport, this has never been so right. Thank you.